Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. While further upgrading my motion control rig, I decided to change the controller from an Arduino Uno to an ESP32. This gives me the ability to connect four axes individually as well as Wi-Fi connectivity. Barton Ring has done some amazing work with porting Gerbil to the ESP32. I have used Gerbil ESP for my rotating table in the past and will be using the new and improved Fluid NC for all my motion control rigs. Hardware-wise, I chose the ubiquitous Arduino CNC shield on top of an ESP Duino combined with the super quiet TMC2209 drivers. On the Fluid NC wiki it explicitly says that they do not support this hardware choice and are tired of hearing about it, but it is a perfect match for my use case so I tried it anyway. During my testing I stumbled across a tricky complication of this hardware combination, so I chose to share my solution with you in this video. I will link my files as well as any resources I found in the description of the video in case you want to try this yourself. First I had to figure out the Arduino pins for the various CNC shield functions. I tracked down for each pin the function on the CNC shield to the Arduino pin and then to the corresponding ESP pin. We will need these pins to create the config file for Fluid NC, but more on that later. Before connecting to the ESP Duino, I had to install drivers for its USB to serial interface. My ESP Duino uses a CH340 driver chip to convert the onboard serial interface to USB. A comprehensive tutorial on how to do this can be found at sparkfun.com, but basically I just downloaded and executed the installer from the website and was good to go. Moving on to FluidNC. FluidNC is a CNC machine firmware for the ESP32 controller with a huge set of functions. It has all the known functions of Gerbil and adds a web UI, wireless connectivity, 6 axes, custom kinematics and much more. You can configure FluidNC to be as slim or as extensive as you need it to be. To install FluidNC on your ESP Duino, you can either download it from its GitHub repository or use the new web installer. I have used the download version. The download of FluidNC comes with scripts to automatically detect and install FluidNC on your ESP Duino. Here you can choose between a Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi setup. I chose the Wi-Fi version. After the upload, we have to configure our machine. Unlike Gerbil ESP and Gerbil before it, you don't have to compile in the actual configuration of your machine. The setup of the pins and machine functions is defined by a YAML file, which can be uploaded to the file system of the ESP after FluidNC has been installed. The config file is stored in the internal flash of the ESP, so no external SD card is required. This is great because you can just download a pre-compiled and tested binary from the repository and know it's going to work. To create the config file, I entered the pins I had defined earlier in a config template provided on the FluidNC GitHub. I just deleted everything I didn't need and added one axis. The FluidNC wiki has a great section about writing config files. You should check it out if you plan to write your own. To upload the config file, I have used a little program called FluidTerm, which comes with the download of FluidNC. Just execute FluidTerm, hit Ctrl U and select the file you want to upload. The name of the config file must exactly match the name FluidNC is looking for, which is normally config.yaml. After it's done, restart the controller with the reset button. The ESP will now start with your specified configuration and machine name. The configuration of Fluid NC was now done and I moved on to setting the reference voltage of the stepper drivers. To test the configuration I used DRV drivers because I am more familiar with them. The reference voltage tells the driver how much current is allowed to flow through the motor coils. You can find the maximum allowed value in the specs of your motor. To calculate the reference voltage for the DRV8825 drivers just divide your desired maximum motor current by 2. In my case that's 1.5 amps, so 0.75 volts as reference voltage. The setting of the reference voltage can be done with a small screwdriver, a multimeter and a power supply. Disconnect all motors to do this. Connect your power supply to the input of the CNC shield and set it to your operating voltage, in my case 12 volts. After that, 
connect the ground of your multimeter to the ground of the CNC shield and clamp the positive lead to your screwdriver. Turn on your power supply and slowly turn the tiny potentiometer on the motor driver to match the reference voltage. That's it! The CNC shield has jumpers for each stepper driver to set the micro steps. Check out the documentation of your stepper driver to see the correct jumper placement. For my DRV8825 I placed all three jumpers to get 32 micro steps. For the TMC2209 I only placed jumper M0 to get 32 micro steps as well. Now everything was set up. I connected my motors, turned on my power supply and sent the first G-code command. Everything worked perfectly. After this success I moved on to the TMC2209 drivers. I've calculated the voltage with a handy online calculator, set up the driver, connected the motor and nothing. The ESP was no longer booting. It just displayed a cryptic error message and was stuck in a boot loop. This only appeared if I booted the ESP after the motor voltage was applied. After digging into the pinout and boot behavior of the ESP for a couple of hours, I had found the culprit, GPIO12. During boot, this pin tells the controller which voltage the internal flash is set to. If it is driven high, the ESP expects 1.8 volts, but the controller operates at 3.3 volts. Therefore, the flash was not recognized during boot up. A quick measurement with my oscilloscope confirmed a 3.3 volt burst at this pin during boot. But where was the voltage coming from? After all, this is an output pin to drive the enable input of the stepper drivers. Turns out the ESP32 gives this pin a brief 3.3 volt level during boot to sense if either a pull up or pull down resistor is connected. The 10k pull up resistor of the CNC shield tells the controller to expect 1.8 volts from the flash and therefore causes the problem during boot. But why does the DRV not cause this problem and the TMC does? A quick read of the data sheet confirms my suspicion. The DRV ADA25 has an internal pull down resistor which pulls the voltage low enough during boot to recognize the correct flash voltage. The solution to this problem is to simply remove the pull up on the CNC shield and connect the enable pin to ground via a pull down resistor. I've bent and sorted a 10k pull down resistor to a socket header to act as a jumper for the ground and enable pins on the CNC shield. After these modifications, the board boots and the motors work perfectly. All four motors move independently and are controlled via Telnet over Wi-Fi. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe while you're down there. 22 or 9 drivers. I've calculated the volt... The ESP was no longer booting, it just displayed a cryptic error message and was stuck in a butt, butt loop. <laughs>